Today, we summoned the Death Ball 2.0. Do guns even fire where you're aiming? What's up, guys? We're back with episode 6 of Myth Busting Mondays, the series where I take myths from you guys and try to test them in game. Be sure to comment your myths to be featured in the next episode. Our first myth is from Ed21. Can you make a sky base from goo with multiple strands supporting it because otherwise the goo will break? This is one of those myths, I wish we had more time to play around with it, but I'd say we definitely pulled this one off. We used the barrier along the outside of the map as a base for one side of our sky base and used the building as our other base. By doing this, we were able to create a large floor with way more than 15 goo connected. I really wish there were custom games or we could play a cash out out here, but unfortunately the goo doesn't stay long enough for us to expand too much on this but we managed to get a floor, walls, roof, and entrance. I'd say we confirmed this myth, you can make a sky base using goo. Razgor's myth is, you can juggle the cash box on your head if you jump at the correct moment. Now, I know this may not seem that interesting or useful, but I'm sorry, this made me laugh way more than it probably should have. This is just another mechanic in the game where I'm just left speechless. I have no clue why this is in the game or how this could even be useful. If you time your jumps correctly, you can bounce the cash box infinitely on your head and even launch it higher than you could throw it. Something about headbutting the cash box makes me laugh, but this myth is definitely confirmed. Up next, Ikazo's myth. Can you place a barricade on the unattached or attached wrecking ball and then goo the barricade to effectively move around the wrecking ball? I hopped in a game and immediately learned the goo deflects off of the barricades. We learned in our previous episodes that goo also deflects off of the wrecking ball and this is one of the properties that allowed for some of the craziness before and some of the craziness later in this episode, but unfortunately we could not use the barricades to help us move around the wrecking ball. In fact, it actually made moving the wrecking ball around significantly more difficult because of how bulky it got. Granted, we did try to put as many barricades as we could on it. Although it couldn't help us move the wrecking ball, the barricade definitely helped us deal more destruction when the wrecking ball is pushed into a wall anything the barricades touched also was destroyed this made for some hilarious gameplay but our original myth is busted you cannot use barricades to aid in moving the wrecking ball around while we we're discussing the wrecking ball we got a nuclear myth from default can an elevator lift a wrecking ball? The simple answer to this question was yes it can, but like always, you know we dive as deep as possible. Almost immediately after messing around with goo, I was able to use the wrecking ball to push my teammate right through the wall. The elevator and elevator shaft is one of the few structures that the wrecking ball will not destroy no matter what. For whatever reason, this creates some sort of collision when you use goo to force the wrecking ball further towards the elevator corner or wall. After replicating this, I immediately thought back to our previous episodes where we tried over and over to get the cash out station through a wall with no success. This collision made me wonder if we could force the cash out station through the wall using the same exact method. I almost gave up trying because like our other attempts in previous episodes, we had no luck, but after relentless gooing, it finally caved and went right through the wall. I got it! I got it! Yes! <laughs> but I was not satisfied just yet. I knew there had to be more to this. We took this one step further and thought maybe we could shove ourselves under the floor since we could go through walls. I got through, I got through! Yes! And if you can believe it, we managed to actually glitch right through the floor and fall below the map. Whoa! What the f What? 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 <laughs> <laughs> That's a view you don't get to see often. This was a little more difficult than the first things we discovered, but we were trying to see if we could create a goo platform underneath the map. Unfortunately, we weren't successful on this quest, but maybe in the future where you guys will pull this off. We were able to push our teammate under the map repeatedly. We learned if you or a teammate plays light with dash, you can glide right through walls using this method. The dash makes this whole process way smoother than it probably should be. This will have to be another myth we revisit in the future. Once again, we strayed pretty far here from our original myth, but it was confirmed you absolutely can use the elevators around the map to move the wrecking ball. Up next, hard drives myth. Running a medium with riot shield doesn't set off mines. 
this one is definitely an insane find. I'm not sure how I haven't heard someone mention this before, but playing with Riot Shield makes you 100% immune to all landmines. You can walk right over them while holding the aim button, or you can just run over them normally. With certain mines, your Riot Shield literally eats them like Pac-Man and removes them. Others, you'll just be free to walk all over them without setting them off. A super sick mechanic I'm glad I learned. This myth is confirmed. Seedra's myth is, if you throw a mine down and then put a jump pad on top of it, you won't see it but will still be hit when using the jump pad from other teams. Immediately after trying this, we did confirm you can hide landmines under jump pads pretty well actually. It works way better if you have the UFO skin for the jump pad because it's thicker, but both jump pads are still functional with the active mines hidden. We surprisingly managed to get multiple kills using this method. Definitely a pretty hilarious discovery for me. I'm honestly surprised I don't see people doing this more often. With multiple mines, you can insta-kill a medium or even a heavy. This myth is also confirmed. Mubo says, when you wipe a team at 1 second left on the clock, they don't get minus 30% and it's a game changer. We hopped in the game and determined instead of trying to wipe another team with perfect timing, we'd just wipe ourselves instead. I waited until last second and blew myself up with a nuke and as you can see in the top left, we still lost our 30%. We dropped from 18,000 points all the way down to 12,000. This myth is busted. <laughs> Crafno returns with another super thanks and myth, can you catch a grenade or mine mid-air with goo from the goo gun? This was yet another shocking find today. You actually can catch mines mid-air with the goo gun. When successful, the goo traps the mine inside, effectively disarming it. Timing is very difficult with this one, and I'm sure things have to align well server side. We pulled this off a dozen times, it was so funny. Shout out to our random teammate, Big01, who without using voice chat, followed us and joined in on the process. This type of stuff makes my day when randoms or viewers try to help out in the process without fully understanding understanding what's happening. We did try for half an hour to goo a grenade mid-air. We did not have luck with this, but I'm honestly thinking it's just because the grenades are smaller and travel faster. I think if you timed this perfectly or got the grenades to move slower, this could work as well. Might have to mess around with low gravity for this one in the future. We're calling this myth confirmed. You can catch mines mid-air using the goo gun. Our next myth is from Stealth Monkey. If you place zip lines by a cash out, enemies trying to steal the cash out will accidentally take the zips instead. This one is just flat out funny. We used goo to aid us by forcing enemies to steal from certain angles. You definitely can use zip lines to deter people from stealing. I wouldn't recommend it as a regular defense strategy, but who knows, if you had this set up and your team dies towards the end of a cash out, this absolutely could buy you a few seconds. Most people take the zip a few times before they figure it out and try to break them. Keep in mind though, if you place the zips, they will also stop you and your teammates from stealing as well. This myth is hilariously confirmed. Zip lines block the ability to steal a cash out. Thomas comments, can a throwing knife bounce off of a jump pad? At first this seemed as if you could, but we quickly learned the throwing knives actually bounce off the floor normally, and once they touch the floor, they are inactive. Throwing the knives at a jump pad will deal damage to the jump pad, but it doesn't even trigger the bounce sound effect, animation, or effect itself. You cannot break glass, damage enemies, or do anything with the knives once they've hit the ground or even touch a jump pad. This myth is busted. <laughs> Our last myth is from Oppo who says, bullets shoot from the center of your screen no matter where your crosshair or sight is. This is definitely a crazy mechanic in the game. To display this, I removed my in-game crosshair dot and replaced it with a red dot that stays in the center of the screen no matter what, so pay attention to that red dot throughout this. When you're aiming and just moving your sight around, you notice the red dot at the center of the screen is pretty closely aligned with the center of my sight. But watch what happens as soon as I start moving my character and moving my sight at the same time. Immediately, they're no longer aligned. So the question is, which is your gun going to fire at? The center of the screen with our red dot or where you're aiming? Well, I think I got a perfect clip here by jumping up and down that answers that question. You can clearly see on this frame here, my sight line is not close to the enemy, yet my shot connects. This is because my gun is not firing where my sight says it will, 
My gun is firing at the center of the screen regardless of all other factors. It does not matter if you're jumping, mantling, strafing, or anything at all. Even when your crosshair or sight is moving around, your weapon always fires from and to the center of your screen. The XP54 does a great job at displaying this because it has a built-in red sight. You can see the XP sight bounces all over the screen, but the red dot in the center is all that matters. This really puts things into perspective and feels like it should be more common knowledge in the community. I know I was definitely frustrated before I knew this because sometimes my shots would seemingly go right through people, but after all, it was just the game's core mechanic. This is why many players use third-party software or just remove their center crosshair dot. I feel like this will change in the future since the developers have acknowledged this and even encouraged third-party crosshair software. I can't comment on other games, but I'm interested to hear from you guys below if any other games you know are like this. This was definitely worse during the beta, but this still feels pretty brutal to me. Would love to hear your guys' thoughts on this below, but Oppo's original myth is confirmed. Bullets only shoot from and to the center of your screen no matter what not where your crosshair or sight is. Definitely a crazy episode today. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll catch you next Mythbusting Monday.